Joey and Jess. We're headed out to the Polaris to check out the equipment for our physical oceanography. is we attach it to this winch here and we lower it down into the water and it allows us to get a vertical profile of the water column so we can measure salinity and temperature at a certain depth. Um, we can also add on other instruments to this so this one here has a fluorometer which allows us to measure the fluorescence which gives us an idea of how much prim primary um, production is happening in the water and also uh, a dissolved oxygen needed too. And because we're getting it at different depths, we're actually getting a really detailed picture of the structure of the water at that particular time and place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, we yeah. can um, see what's happening at the surface and this uh, one of these instruments can go down to a thousand metres, so we can get a really detailed description of is there any particular tricks to operating this instrument? You know, any pitfalls or any ways, things we have to think about when we deploy it? Um, so, one of the, the fluorometer, when you put it in the water, it's got to, um, when you turn it on, the water starts pumping through, so you have to leave it at the surface for uh, a minute or so for it to um, get water all the way through the uh, pump and then, then you can start to lower it down, otherwise you'll get a, a false reading. On the Polaris, because we have this really big winch, we can actually attach the CTD to this wee uh, rosette up here. So the rosette also allows us to attach some Niskin bottles onto um, it as well. So that means when we lower, lower it down into a certain depth and we get the real-time readings from the CTD, we can um, instruct the bottles to close at a certain depth so that we get a water sample uh, from exactly where we want it. Hi, so we're going to talk about the HANA probe and it's very similar to the CTD but you have some constraints for the HANA probe. So you would lower this um, kind of off the side of the boat and it will measure dissolved oxygen, temperature, pH, salinity yeah. um, and it'll kind of have an output reading right onto this monitor but your limitation is the length of your cord. And so this also, besides using off the side of the boat, can be used to measure your confounding factors. So if you're doing a tank setup, you can have kind of a bin of water and set it in there and it'll measure um, what your water is that you're testing an organism in. Um, so if you're, you know, taking care of some fish and you want to make sure that consistently the salinity and the temperature um, and the dissolved oxygen is in each tank, you can measure that there too. So we have, so that's a pretty small one. And then this is just kind of a much larger one. So it has a little bit um, a longer of a cord. So this is probably what we'd use on the Polaris if you were to sample and put this over overboard. And it will just measure continuously. Um, usually you can set that up onto this monitor um, to record that and do output readings. These can be used um, for surface information, um, easier to use from a smaller boat. Yeah, you, you yeah, don't... so much easier easier to handle so you're going to be able to kind of just lower it by hand you don't necessarily yeah. need the whole winch setup like the ctd right. and also yeah it's not going to be at depth so you know, maybe if you're you know 10 20 meters kind of max again you're constricted by the cord length so most of the time you're going to be looking um, closer to the surface and what um, measurements those are at the surface okay. i guess they all need um calibration and checking mm -hmm. yeah you always want to calibrate your instruments um, to make sure that what you're reading isn't, um, you know, kind of faulty. You also want to, a lot of these instruments, when you set them in, you don't want to immediately be recording being like, that's what it is. You want to take it some time, so kind of adjust to its surroundings because it is, this one should be better. It is in some like calibration materials. Um, not positive what those are, but, um, so you always want to keep them moist um, and damp 
because you don't want them to dry out, but then once you're using them, you do kind of want to let them sit in the seawater that you're measuring. Okay, thanks. So that, that's some pretty important little wee pointers about how to use and how to deploy. And uh, the data can be real time and recorded, but you're saying also that the data can be stored on those. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. Um, so if you wanted to kind of take it over time, if you're at a sampling site location, for a while you could be kind of leave it in the water and it would be recording if the temperature is changing especially at the surface you know like if you have sun out or not that you know first meter of water um, can change quite a bit so that's what and would you'd be able to record changes over a tide cycle yeah exactly yes yeah. so you could deploy this you know off a deck um, you want to make sure that your cord is long enough so when you know the tide drops those two meters at low tide that it's not out of the water because that can damage the instruments. You do need that um, that moisture barrier on the sensors. Yeah. Thanks very much, sir. It looks like very mechanical rather than electronic technology. Very mechanical. It takes a bit of strength to open these um, yes. little caps right here and you close them off right here with these cable ties. And then once this weight gets sent down the rope, it'll open this and close the ties, which is very different from the Niskin bottle, which is closed by that charge on the wire that just talked about. Okay. So um, it's I guess being used for hundreds of years, it's pretty common, but still used today? Yes, still used today, very common. It's a great way to take samples when you're on a smaller boat and just send this off the side and get samples at different depths. Okay. Any um, issues or problems with its deployment? Do you think, think tricks um, with it? Sometimes if you send the messenger, these don't close, and then when you pull all of it back up, you didn't get the sample that you want, so then you have to resend it down to the depth. Um, 